Hello students. So in this video, we're going to see how to transition from motion in one dimension to motion in two dimensions. And now motion in two dimensions can be exemplified by a projectile, which is an object that is thrown at an angle to the horizontal. So if you pick up a stone and just give it a certain velocity at an angle to the horizontal, that is a projectile. It could be a javelin in athletics. It could be the shot put. You know, it could be anything that you give a certain velocity at an angle to the horizontal. But before we come to that, let us look at this object that is dropped from a certain height. Now we see that this object doesn't have an initial vertical velocity. It does not even have an initial horizontal velocity. So it's dropped from a height of 44.1 meter. Its initial velocity along both the y and the x-axis is zero because it's a dead object. It has no velocity. And to find the time it takes to hit the ground, we know we use a is equal to negative 9.8 meter per second squared. And then we have delta y is negative 44.1 meter. Negative because it's going down and it's dropped from a height of 44.1 meter. And then we use this equation in kinematics, which is delta y is v naught t plus one half a t squared. On substitution, you get negative 44.1 is equal to, the first term becomes zero because the initial velocity is zero. And then you have plus half times negative 9.8 times t squared. Now we can solve that equation to find the time, as you know. So on the right side, it's going to be negative 4.9 because half times 9.8 is 4.9. So divide both sides by negative 4.9 and solve for t. Also notice that the unit for t squared is going to be second squared. So when you take the square root, we get, actually we get plus or minus, but time cannot be negative. So we take the positive value, which is three seconds. So that's what we did in one dimensional motion. Now let's imagine that you are projecting an object, giving it a horizontal velocity. Now from the same height. So you are throwing something, giving it a horizontal velocity of 10 meter per second. And we're gonna find the time taken for it to reach the ground. So that's the object projected at 10 meter per second. Remember, it's perfectly horizontal. And that's the path that it takes. Now, what is the initial horizontal velocity of this object. It's 10 meter per second. But what is the initial vertical velocity of this object? It's zero meter per second. Why? Because we projected it perfectly horizontal. It does not have a vertical component of its initial velocity. That means we're going to see that this object is going to take exactly the same time to reach the ground like the previous one. Why? Because both of their initial vertical velocities were zero. Okay, so considering the initial vertical velocity, it's zero meter per second, and all other quantities are the same as before. So A is the same, negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Delta Y is again, see Delta Y is negative 44.1. Although it takes that parabolic path, the vertical displacement is the same. And we are gonna get T is equal to three seconds when we use that same equation, all right? But what's the difference? 
The difference is that this object is not coming straight down. Instead, it's taking a parabolic path. And so it moves through a horizontal distance. So it has a horizontal displacement, which is BC. How do you find that? Now, to find that, let's look at the X quantities. So the important thing is to remember to the, keep the X and the Y quantities separate. Because the X and the Y are independent of each other. So we treat them separately. As a result, what is the initial vertical, I mean the initial horizontal velocity? It's 10 meter per second. And is there an acceleration along the horizontal? No. The acceleration due to gravity is along the vertical. So what's the component of the acceleration along the horizontal? Zero. Therefore, when we use the same equation to find delta x, you can now see that the second term involving acceleration is going to become zero. Because the acceleration due to gravity along the horizontal is zero. I hope that makes sense. Therefore, we're going to get delta x as 10 times 3, 30 meter. Now let's uh, move a little further and see what happens if this projectile was not projected horizontally. Instead, it was given a velocity at an angle. So that's what we're going to do next. So it's projected from the same height, but now it's projected at an angle of 30 degrees with the same velocity 10 meter per second. So now you got to remember that the velocity being a vector has to be resolved into the two components, the x and the y components. Using trig, when we do that, we see that this angle is 30 degrees, this is 10 meter per second, and from that triangle ADE, by the definition of sine theta, it's opposite side by hypotenuse, so that is DE by AD, which is sine 30, and therefore DE is AD times sine 30. And what is AD? AD is 10 meter per second. Therefore, you get the vertical component. Now that's the vertical component. VOY is 10 sine 30, which is five meter per second. Similarly, we can find the horizontal component of the velocity using the definition of cosine. That is AE by AD, because it's the adjacent side by the hypotenuse, you're gonna get AE by AD is cosine 30. Rearrange that, you get AE is AD times cosine 30, and again, AE is the horizontal component. So we get the initial horizontal component Vx as, or Vox rather, as 10 cosine 30. Plug in the value of cosine 30 in your calculator and you find it to be 8.66 meter per second. So that's the first thing that you do in two dimensional motion. Always break up the vector, the initial velocity in this case, into its horizontal and vertical components and then treat them as separate, like we always do, because they are independent of each other. So let's focus on the vertical component now. What is the initial vertical velocity? It's five meter per second. What is the acceleration along the vertical? Negative 9.8 meter per second squared. What is the uh, vertical displacement? Well, I know that it goes a little bit up and then comes back down, but remember, displacement is the shortest distance from the starting point to the finishing point. So it starts from there and finishes down there. So starting point is A, finishing point is C, but vertically it's only moved A, B. 
we don't have to consider how much it goes up. Why? Because it comes down by the same amount. And so it cancels out in a way. Positive something minus something. So it's actually negative 44.1 again. So that's the vertical displacement. No matter how high it goes, the vertical displacement is negative 44.1 meter. And then we can use the same equation as before to calculate the time. But there's going to be more math in this case because when, it's, when we substitute the values, we find that none of the terms become zero. So you got 5t, we're looking for time, aren't we? 5t plus 1 half times negative 9.8t squared. Do the math. First term is, of course, 5t, and then negative 9.8 by 2 is negative 4.9. Rearrange them, bring them all to the left side. And uh, notice that the signs have changed because I brought these two to the left side. Their signs have changed. And you have a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation, and then that is A. Remember, a quadratic equation is like AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. I hope you remember that. And the solution is given by, in this case, the variable is T. We're trying to find T, so it's minus B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC by 2A. That's quite a mouthful, but you got to remember that equation. And carefully substitute the values of A, B, and C. The first term is negative B. That's why it became positive 5, because B is minus 5. Likewise, A is 4.9. C is negative 44.1. So what do you see? You see that when you multiply these two negative quantities, it becomes positive. And when you do all the math under the square root, you're going to get 889.6. In the denominator, it's 9.8. Take the square root of 889.6, you get 29.82. And once you do the math, you see that once again, you're going to get two answers. One is positive, the other is negative. But we do not consider the negative sign because time cannot be negative. So it's 3.55 seconds. And then we proceed to find the horizontal displacement BC. How do we do that? Well, to find that, all you need to do is take the horizontal component of the velocity and multiply it with the time. Why? Because the second factor becomes zero. So the horizontal component is 8.66 multiplied with the time that we got. And voila, you get the answer. So that is how you get the horizontal displacement as 30.74 meter. So this is just a typical example of how to deal with projectile motion. Now in the forthcoming videos we will have more problems and examples worked out so see you all on the next video